today we are going to rank the state DOTs. And in fact, we are going to be ranking the ones in the south. Here we go. There's a map of the states that we will be ranking today. Not for anything other than the way they are signed on their highways, on their interstate highways. You can see the states right here. I'm not going to list them, and we'll see them as we go. Thank you for watching Control City Freak. This is the YouTube channel where we talk about interstate highways and the places that they are signed to go to. My name is Todd, and I appreciate all of your viewership. Thank you so much. If you like this kind of content, please give us a like, and if you really dig it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. All right, we're going to start at the top, just because why not? That's more fun. And number one is Tennessee. No surprise to regular viewers of this channel, we all know that Tennessee is ten to believe in. Let's take a look at some signage on Tennessee. This one is done quite well. We see 55 is signed for Jackson Miss, which is nice because it differentiates it from Jackson, Tennessee, which I-40 goes to, and it's not too far away from Memphis. Here we see 55 in Memphis, and it is signed for St. Louis right away. Memphis and Tennessee have no trouble in signing out-of-state places. Here we see 840, the large loop around Nashville, so we see it is signed for Frank and Knoxville for through traffic. Nashville is done really well all around. The three interstates there all have concurrencies with one another and they all mention the third when they are not with that one. So here we see West 24 to 65 and West 40 to South 65 as 24 and 40 splits their own concurrencies. Here's another look at how they do it in Nashville. Again, very clear, very accurate, and very well-chosen control cities all around. 24 in Chattanooga is signed for Atlanta and Knoxville, and that's because it's going to be intersecting with I-75 and ending at I-75, which goes to both of those two places. I feel like this is where Tennessee really shines. We get the signs for 59, which we actually don't meet until Georgia, and 59 is signed for Birmingham, which is what it should be signed all along, starting from Chattanooga. Here in the Knoxville area, we have a good look at where 75 and 40 are going. Again, solid choices all around. And once again, Tennessee, not scared to sign out of state places. We get Asheville signed here. Here we are in far eastern Tennessee. So this is a little weirder out here because the cities are not as big. But when you're in this area, this sign still makes sense. And Asheville is the one that's signed ultimately. All right, number two is Arkansas. Here we are in the Little Rock area. So we see 30 signed for Little Rock and 40 signed for Memphis. Well done. Arkansas really likes to sign two control cities at one time on the overhead signs, but in this case, we are signing a major Arkansas city and a major out-of-state city. Very well done. Again, we're seeing two cities on here signed for each road. Jacksonville is kind of the odd one out. I'm not sure why that's there because it's a much smaller town, but Conway's fairly large so far as I-40 goes. Fort Smith and Memphis are obvious. Lots going on here with 30 meeting 440 and 530. A laundry list of control cities here. If anything, it almost might be too many control cities on this sign. Meeting I-49 has done really well and it's meeting with I-30 in Texarkana, so we see 49 signed for Houston, Shreveport, and Fort Worth. 49 doesn't go to Houston, of course, but they're going well in advance for when 369 is finished, and it's the current route of US 59. Here's one of the few flubs that Arkansas makes. We get 55 signed for West Memphis instead of just Memphis here, for whatever reason. Coming into the Memphis area, though, everything is done in a very clear way, and we do see that Jackson MS on the sign, which helps differentiate us from Jackson, Tennessee. We do get two cities signed here as per usual, but we get St. Louis on the bottom line. I feel like they could take Blyville off of this sign, but Little Rock and St. Louis are fantastic choices. This one I find really cool, where 49 meets 30, and we get Texarkana, Dallas, Houston, Shreveport, Little Rock, lots of big cities all on that sign, very well done. There's a lot of Georgia left to do in this channel, 
and I'm only talking about highways that I've actually already covered. I-16 makes sense, East Savannah, and we get 95, signed for Florence and Jacksonville. I'm not sure why Brunswick is in there, but we are at number three now. 16 West Macon is the obvious choice here. I personally would prefer Atlanta, but this is not too much of a crime. 75 South Valdosta is one of the ones in Georgia that I do disagree with quite a bit. I do think they should probably just go for Tampa or something at this point, or possibly Jacksonville. But if you're going to sign something else in Georgia, Georgia, Valdosta is the way to go. Here's the end of I-59, and 24 is signed very well here. Georgia, like Tennessee, recognizes the fact that I-59 goes to Birmingham, which, as soon as it gets into Alabama, they stop recognizing. Here in Augusta, we've got a nice large sign for Atlanta. Here we are in the suburbs of Atlanta, and 20 is still signed for Atlanta because it's going downtown. In Atlanta itself, we have the major intersection with 75 and 85, and they list all of the major control cities for both roads that 20 is intersecting here. So, very thorough, well done. All right, number three is going to be South Carolina. South Carolina is definitely the better of the Carolinas, and it does all right here. 26 is signed for North Charleston and Columbia. North Charleston, eh, we talked about that in the 26 video, but it does work for a secondary for sure. We also get Airport Charleston, so again, Airport can be a fine secondary control city. This sign just looks really nice. I like the outlines of the U.S. highways here. Everything kind of pops out, and Spartanburg and Charlotte are the right choice here. More of I-26 and Augusta, Florence. Not huge cities, but they are the ones that make the most sense to be signed in this situation. Here's our split for Greenville and Spartanburg, so well done here. Asheville is signed in northern South Carolina. Coming back the other way, we get another Spartanburg-Greenville sign. Picking 24, Florence and Columbia makes sense, although this is I-95, so there isn't really an East 20, so this one's a little weird. Charleston and Charlotte, fine choices for I-77 here. And now we come to number five, Virginia. Here we are in the DC metro area in Virginia. We get 66 East Washington, and we see what the Beltway is signed for. It's signed for Tyson's Corner and Baltimore. Here is I-66, again in Virginia, and we get Manassas and Front Royal. So that's about as good as you could expect for westbound I-66. As I said, I-66 westbound, not an easy choice. I-81 here is signed for Staunton and Winchester, so that I really don't care for. That's why Virginia is not in the top three. Virginia also loses points here in the Hampton Roads area. Things can be very confusing. We are in Richmond, and we have 95 signed north for Washington. 64 for Norfolk, and then 95 ultimately will be Petersburg, which eh, I feel like they could have a better city for 95 south there. Number six is Kentucky. Kentucky is signed pretty well, but a lot of the I-69 signage is really weird. This is not entirely Kentucky's fault, it's just that Kentucky has built its section of I-69, whereas its neighbors have not. So here we get this strange laundry list of Morganfield, Madisonville, and Fulton. 24 signed east for Nashville and west for Paducah makes sense. This is a solid sign. A little more weird stuff here, 69 related, uh, South Mayfield and North Calvert City. This bridge is signed really well. I really like what they are doing here as we cross into Louisville. This is right over the Kentucky line. We get 6471 for Lexington, Cincinnati, and 65 South for Nashville, along with the downtown exit. Great job here. Solid control cities all around, Indy, Cincy, St. Louis. Here's one beef I have with Kentucky, particularly in Louisville, only giving us the names of the Beltway freeways rather than telling us where they go. This one in downtown Louisville is solid all around. And here's another problem in Kentucky, Ashland. The strange signing of Ashland, even though it is so far off of I-64, really shouldn't be signed, should be Huntington or Charleston at this point. This is pretty bad too, we get 69 and it does not have an overhead sign for an interstate highway junction. Fulton and Henderson, as I said, are not ideal control cities, but for what Kentucky has to work with currently, they're about as good as you could have. All right, let's take a look at number seven, Florida. We haven't spent a lot of time in Florida on this channel, but we will take a look at the little bit we've got. 10 East Jacksonville, 10 West Tallahassee off of I-75. That's just perfect. 
75 North Valdosta, I don't care for that at all. I can kind of understand Georgia signing it from the north, but from Florida, this should be Atlanta for 75 North at this point. On I-4, we get West Tampa, East Daytona Beach. That makes sense. On 95, North Jacksonville, and I-4 is signed for Orlando. At the end of I-10, we get 95 North for Savannah and South for Daytona Beach. I'd really prefer Miami here, but I understand they're signing Daytona Beach because of the intersection with I-4. And Daytona Beach isn't a tiny place. Lake City, that is going to be a big reason why Florida fell this far in the rankings. 275 North Ocala is pretty bad too. In fact, on I-75 being signed for Ocala and Naples for a good portion of the state does not make a whole lot of sense to me. Why not Gainesville? It's just past Ocala, it's bigger, it has the big university. And for Naples, I'd say just either just Miami or there's a number of cities that are larger and closer than Naples. Number 8 is Alabama. Alabama does a good job sometimes, but there's a reason it's going to be this far down in the rankings. Right here, most things are fine, but this obsession with Gadsden is not healthy. We see going the other way in Birmingham at this large exit. Gadsden is there again, and in neither of these exits do they mention I-22. I feel like in the previous slide, I, the northbound section should mention I-22. Here is I-22, and this is the one time it's signed for Memphis pretty much throughout its run. In fact, just beyond that exit, Alabama signs 22 for Tupelo, which is sort of big so far as I-22 goes, and it's famous because of Elvis, but I'd still sign Memphis, you know, which is also famous for Elvis, and it's a whole lot bigger, and it's not really that far, and Tupelo's not in Alabama anyway, so why is Alabama signing small, out-of-state control cities? Speaking of which, Meridian. This is done all right. We get 65 North Nashville at the exit for 565 for Huntsville. In Alabama as a whole, 65 is kind of the exception. They do 65 pretty well all the way through. I did always like this old Florida, Mississippi sign. I think it's kind of fun. But I very much do not like this one, the Pascagoula. Again, small city, not even in state, and this is a brand new sign. So Alabama is double downing on their weird obsession with Pascagoula. And in Mobile, we see that as well. Pascagoula, again, it's in Mississippi. It's not even in Alabama. There's plenty of other places in Mississippi. Biloxi, Gulfport, you could sign, or, you know, New Orleans. All right, number nine, Louisiana. We've seen a lot of crimes by Louisiana in this channel. 49, Opelousas. Uh, that is just a terrible choice, especially since Alexandria is not that much further. 10 West Lake Charles, really not sure why we're going with that. Signing 10 for Bay St. Louis. This is the same thing that Alabama does. Signing small Mississippi towns that are not even signed in Mississippi. Slide L signs are everywhere because of one interchange, so I'm not in favor of that. 55, a major from water to water X5 interstate getting signed for Hammond that's like 20 miles away, 30 miles away. Come on, no. In northern Louisiana on I-20, there are a lot of signs for Monroe, which I don't think should be there either. 49 Texarkana is fine, but 2220 East Monroe. We also get a lot of signs for Vicksburg, which is, you know, a famous and historical place and fairly well known because of that. But it's like 7,000 people and there's not any interstate junction. I would definitely skip over Vicksburg. All right, now we're coming down to number 10, Mississippi. Mississippi does some things kind of well in ways that its neighbors don't do, but it does its own weird thing too. So we get 22 Tupelo Memphis at the exit for 269. 22 Holly Springs and Tupelo should be 22 Tupelo and Birmingham. Signing South Haven, which is just a suburb of Memphis, like a mile away from South Haven. No need for this. Signing Brookhaven down here. I, I don't know what that is. Here's a rare case of a just fine sign in Mississippi. Over here in Biloxi, signed pretty well too for Gulfport and New Orleans. That's a good sign. But this, uh, come on. 59, not even a sub sign, just 59 straight up Laurel. No, no, no. That should be something bigger. Memphis is on the sign, that's the one good thing about this sign, but then Grenada, which we know once we're on 55, Mississippi religiously signs, and Macomb, Macomb, Vicksburg, Meridian, Hattiesburg. There's not a single city in this sign that should be signed, and this is the major junction between an X5 and an XO interstate. If you regularly watch this channel, then this is no surprise. Welcome to North Carolina. 
We love provincial control cities. So, you see all kinds of madness down in North Carolina. We've only done one road that goes there, a little bit of 26, but basically one road that goes there with I-40, and it was not good. So here, you see all kinds of mess. We got Hickory, Y, Biltmore Estate, Hendersonville. Why are these cities on these overhead signs? There's major cities in North Carolina you could be signing. 40 East, Hickory, Biltmore Estate, a major XO interstate that goes to huge cities in North Carolina. Benson, ah, the focus on Benson is unreal. This one's not bad, Chapel Hill, Greensboro. 40 doesn't actually go to Chapel Hill, but it is the right direction from this intersection. Here's one of the really large signs that you see in North Carolina, though we will see larger soon, but High Point, eh, Charlotte, okay, Greensboro, okay, Winston-Salem, okay. Statesville. North Carolina loves signing Statesville. This one's pretty solid, Winston-Salem and Asheville. Here's another massive North Carolina sign, and we are getting Greensboro, Martinsville, Asheboro, Durham. So I have heard of two of the four cities on there, and we've got four different interstate shields up there. This one is maybe the most egregious thing I've come across. This South 85, North 785, Danville. Not mentioning the fact that straight ahead is the main line of I-40 and the main line of North 85. We don't get that information. You have no idea where 40 is supposed to be going or if you want to get North 85, where you should go. Uh, you just go straight, but they don't tell you that. This is a joke. Benson, Smithfield. Come on! Alright, thanks for watching. Todd ranks the state DOTs, Southern Edition. Just as I did last time, I am going to do a tier chart. So I'm going to say S, Tennessee. Tennessee is as good as uh, Utah or Arizona. I think it's, it's way, way up there. Tennessee does great. A, Arkansas, Georgia, and South Carolina all do workmanlike solid jobs without really making a lot of mistakes. B, Virginia, Kentucky, they both do pretty well, but with a few major messes ups here and there. C, Florida. Florida's all over the place. Florida has some great control cities, and Florida has some outlandish control cities. They, you really know, never know what you're going to get in Florida. And then D, got a long list of Ds today. We got Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, North Carolina, all fall into the D category. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Control City Freak. My name is Todd, and I really appreciate your viewership. If you'd like to check out my Todd Ranks the State DOT Southwest Edition, that should be right here on your screen right now. Thanks for watching, and keep on trucking.